Welcome to this installment of the Microchip Technology Self-Paced Training. In this self-paced training, I'll cover the Complementary Waveform Generator, or CWG Peripheral. I'm your host, Chuck Hellebuck. In this training class, I'll cover what is the Complementary Waveform Generator, Input Signal Selection, clock selection, dead band control, auto shutdown, output signal conditioning, a project example, and then a summary. First, I'll cover what a complementary waveform generator is. The complementary waveform generator is a peripheral inside select pick MCU devices. It creates a set of complementary waveforms from one input source. Various input sources are available. For example, a PWM signal can be selected. A clock source is selected to run the peripheral. Dual complementary waveforms are produced based on the input source and can have rising and falling dead band delays. There is a channel A that can be directed to another peripheral or an I.O. pin. A second channel B can be a complement or a similar waveform to channel A. All delay timing for these signals are based on the resolution of the clock source. Shown here is a plot of the CWG waveforms produced from a PWM input signal. The edges of the PWM input signal drives the edges of the output waveforms. Rising and falling edge deadband is also an option. The CWG features include selectable deadband clock source control, selectable input sources, output enable control, output polarity control, deadband control with independent 6-bit rising and falling edge deadband counters, auto shutdown control with selectable shutdown sources, auto restart enable, and auto shutdown pin override control. We'll cover these in future slides. Four sections of the peripheral need to be set up to use the CWG module. Input selection, clock selection, deadband selection, and auto shutdown. Now let's look at the input selection. The input selection block has four different categories of signals to choose from. Output from a comparator, output from a pulse width modulation peripheral, output from the numerically controlled oscillator, and output from the configurable logic cell. Any one of these peripherals outputs can be selected to become the input to the complementary waveform generator. The CWG input source select bits of the CWG control register number one select the input source. Three bits determine the input source for the complementary waveform generator. Each input option has a corresponding 3-bit reference number. Selecting that number in the CWG control register selects that input. In this example, the NCO output is selected. Let's look at the clock selection. The clock selection becomes the time base for the dead band control. There are two choices. The FOSC or system clock of the PIC MCU device and the high frequency internal oscillator. The CWG clock source bit determines the baseline clock for all the CWG calculations. A zero selects the FOSC or system clock. 
A1 selects the high frequency internal oscillator clock. Deadband control is next. Deadband control creates a delay between the channel A and channel B edges. There are separate settings for the rising edge delay and the falling edge delay. Deadband delay is set by two 6-bit counters which allow up to 64 clock counts of delay. Two registers store the deadband delay value. The rising deadband count register controls the delay from the rising edge of the input signal and the falling deadband count register controls the falling edge delay. Each is based on the number of clock pulses to delay. Using one clock pulse delay for rising and falling edge deadband control, the PWM signal would produce two waveforms similar to what is shown here. The edge of the channel A and channel B signals are controlled by the clock signal and the dead band register settings. A change in state of the input signal may not occur in sync with the clock signal. This can cause up to one count uncertainty in the dead band delay. Because of this condition, the dead band delay selections in the dead band count registers are shown in the data sheet as a one count range. The 6 bit value in the dead band count registers range from no dead band delay up to a max of 63 to 64 counts of dead band delay. Let's look at the auto shutdown. Auto shutdown will disable both of the CWG outputs through an external trigger or internal software request. When the shutdown event occurs, both outputs will change to the state defined in the CWG control one register. The shutdown state can be defined differently with the shutdown state bits in the CWG control one register. Four choices exist for each output. The output can be forced high, low, or tri-stated on shutdown independent of the polarity setting. It can also be driven to its normal inactive state. Auto shutdown can be triggered from a selection of sources. Software generated, external input pin, output of a configurable logic cell, output of an internal comparator. These are enabled and disabled by bits in the CWG Control 2 register. To enable the software generated shutdown, the auto shutdown event bit is set to 1 in the CWG Control 2 register. This will instantly force a shutdown state. To enable an external input pin controlled shutdown, the GASD FLT bit is set to 1. When the CWG FLT IO pin is pulled low, it will trigger the shutdown. The configurable logic cell can control the shutdown by setting the GASD CLC bit to a 1. This will trigger a shutdown when the CLC module output goes high. Comparators can be used to control the shutdown. There is a bit setting for each comparator. Setting the GASDC1 or DC2 bit to a 1 will trigger a shutdown when the comparator output goes high. After an auto shutdown event has occurred, there are two ways to restart operation. Software control and auto restart. The GAR SEN bit determines if auto restart is enabled or not. Setting it to 1 will enable auto restart. When all shutdown conditions are clear, 
then software can clear the GASE bit. After the bit is cleared, the CWG outputs will begin operating on the next rising edge of the input signal. If auto restart is enabled, then right after the conditions are clear, the CWG outputs will begin operating on the next rising edge of the input signal without any software actions required. Other options exist to modify the output waveform. To output the CWG signals on the I.O. pins, the CWGA and CWGB outputs need to be connected to the I.O. pins through a bit setting in the CWG control zero register. Setting the bits to 1 will enable the CWG output on the I.O. pins. The normal mode for signal A is active high. The normal mode for signal B is active low. Polarity of the outputs can be set to invert the output signal. This will allow channel A and channel B to output the exact same signal. The CWG polarity bits in the CWG control zero register set the waveform as normal mode or inverted mode. There is a bit for each waveform. Now let's step through an example. This example will convert the numerically controlled oscillator output into two complementary outputs with dead band delay and shutdown. When the stop button is pushed, bringing the CWG FLT pin low, the output signals will both go to ground potential. The NCO module will produce a square wave input to the CWG module. The output signals will be complementary outputs of the NCO square wave input. Let's step through the software setup. First we'll set up the input section. The NCO output is selected as the input signal for the CWG module in the CWG control 1 register. This is done by setting the three G1 IS bits to 1, 1, 0. The clock source is selected in the CWG control 0 register. The G1 CSO bit is set to 1 for the high frequency internal oscillator clock. The dead band delays are set up for a 63 to 64 clock cycle count for both rising and falling edge. This is done by setting each dead band count register to 3F hex or all six bits set to one. The shutdown control is set to engage when the CWG FLT I.O. pin is pulled low. This is controlled by setting the G1 ASD FLT bit to 1 in the CWG control 2 register. The CLC output is not used to control the shutdown, so it's set to 0. Now we set up the auto shutdown settings. The auto restart is enabled by setting the G1 ARSEN bit to a 1 in the CWG control 2 register. The G1 ASC shutdown mode bit is cleared for normal operation. The shutdown state of the outputs need to be set up for shutdown mode. All the G1 ASDLA and B bits are set to zero for the CWG output pins to be inactive during shutdown. Now we'll set up the output signal conditioning. The CWG output signals are connected to the CWG IO pins through the CWG control zero register. A one setting for the G1 OEA and G1 OEB bits will
will output the CWG signals on the CWGIO pins. The polarity is set to normal mode for both outputs. The CWG module is then enabled as the last step. The NCO module is set up for the 50% duty cycle waveform input to the CWG. This setup was actually covered in a separate self-paced module for the numerically controlled oscillator. We're just showing it here for reference. The screen capture shows the results. The yellow signal is the NCO input square wave. The blue signal is the CWG B output and the purple signal is the CWG A output. The dead band delay can be seen in the screen capture as well. The rising and falling edge dead band delays are shown relative to the NCO signal edge. The stop switch is pressed forcing a shutdown shown here in this screen capture. Both output signals go to an active state during the shutdown mode. When the switch is released, the auto restart will bring the signals back to normal. Here are a few application ideas for the complementary waveform generator. Some application examples of this module will be switch mode power supplies, LED lighting, battery charging, motor control, power factor correction, Class D audio amplifiers, or any application in which gates are switched back and forth. In this example shown, we are using a simple single output from the PWM to create a half-bridge PWM. With the features like deadband control, it ensures that there will be no accidental short in the system. The CWG can also be used to directly drive a buck converter. In this example, the PWM is used to generate the frequency and the sense circuitry can be implemented using the digital to analog converter and comparator modules. The CWG provides features like deadband control to the switches to prevent electrical transients. The comparator and digital to analog converter can be used to set the threshold to control the shutdown of the CWG. Let's summarize what we covered. The CWG produces two complementary outputs from a single input signal. The CWG has four main sections to set up. The input selection, the clock selection, a deadband control, and the auto shutdown. Outputs have enable and polarity control. Deadband is controlled with independent 6-bit rising and falling edge deadband counters. Auto shutdown is controlled with selectable shutdown sources, auto restart enable, and auto shutdown pin override control. Thank you for watching this training presentation. We hope you enjoyed it.